Hey, you guys, I'm so excited that we are having this new coach call. I just wanted to collaborate and just let you know that you're here and you're fully supported. For all of you who are newer, congratulations on seriously joining, I think, the best community in the whole wide world. And I can say that um, based on on experience. Like I was a super lost person. I was 35 pounds heavier. And for some, I didn't even know what coaching was. I thought it was like beach body was like you get fit on a beach. I had no idea that it was like P90X. I didn't understand. I had never tried Shakeology. And that's like Jade. That's, she's a new coach and she tried Shakeology for the first time today. I think, um, I was that person that was totally me. Didn't know, but I was like, I just, for some reason had a feeling I could be like, okay at this or good at it. And the first thing I ever wrote down was slow and steady wins the race. I knew if I didn't quit and I just figured it out, I believed in my ability to figure it out. I knew nothing. I had like 300 Facebook friends. Never. I was like the creeper on social media. I didn't post actual like content of like that can transform lives. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I just believed that it, I could do it. So I want to share a little bit about that. So four years almost into coaching and Teresa, I would love for you to share some as well. I just really want to share potential with you guys first and foremost, as we start, when I first started, Teresa has a totally different start than I, I did. Like, I believe you got your, your Shakeology covered within, before it even arriving to your house. And for me, it was kind of the opposite where I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I like, I think it was three months later, I finally got my Shakeology covered. But then from that moment on of when I did, it was almost like I connected for me to help people. I had to, it was like an obsession. This had, this had been changing my life. And I was like, I need to share this. Like this can't stay with me. And there's a thing called success club. I'm going to talk to you about it. But now I believe I've hit success club 44 months in a row. And that you might be like, oh my gosh, like that thing, you cannot compare your start to where I am right now, but you need to understand something. I am ready to share the tools with you. I'm ready to mentor you. I'm ready to help you. And for me, I didn't have that mentorship. I didn't have that when I started. And so I need to tell you, like, you have it, like you have it right here. And so I want to share that with you. So the potential of coaching. It's stupid. Like it's recorded right now. Like if anyone from Beachbody Corporate's watching this, Beachbody does not guarantee you any kind of income. Um, it's all based on your hard work, skill, and diligence. Yes, I'm not going to promise you anything, but I'm going to tell you this: if you stick this out and you trust this process, it gets crazy. I want to say stupid because it's like unbelievable that someone like me could be doing what I'm doing right now. Let me explain. Uh, the first college I ever applied to, I got rejected super embarrassing. I was really bad at school. So I felt like, oh my gosh, someone like me can never be someone like that. Right? Like I had this mentality. Um, and then I became a teacher, loved it, loved it, loved it, loved it. I, I taught in the inner city of Milwaukee. I loved it, but I was freaking burnt out, dude. Like just so burnt out. I remember sitting on a desk after school thinking, I am hustling so hard. I'm working harder than maybe some of the teachers around me and they're getting paid more than me or the same as me. And I'm putting in more hours than them. Wasn't sleeping, like all this stuff. I was like, there. I remember being like, can I do this for the rest of my life? Like, I'm so tired. Can any of you relate to that? Maybe in the current circumstance that you're in or just like understand that mentality. That's where I was. So then I said yes to coaching. And my mom bought Shakeology. She was my first customer and challenger. And that was $30. So that was my first paycheck. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's awesome. Like I helped my mom. She's still a coach to this day. Um, she's, yeah, we'll talk about that later. She's amazing. And then I had a $4.99, not $499, $4.99 paycheck. And I was like, you know what? That wasn't guaranteed. That wasn't a contract I signed signed. Like I earned that. That's cool. Like, okay. Then it got to, it was like $200 a week. And I was like, this is crazy. I remember it was $259. I remember I was visiting Eric's parents and I was like, I made that. Like, that's so cool. And then it turned into a thousand dollars a week. Like what? And then last month we made over $8,000 in our business. You guys, from literally transforming myself, my mind, like my body, like I've lost 35 pounds, 
I've helped people. Not only that now, the team that, like this team and, and Teresa's team, like the, the teams that we're leading, now coaches that we've mentored are making $1,000 a week. That's what's cool, is that the success doesn't stop. Like it just keeps going. So the biggest thing I need you to hear on this before Teresa shares a little bit of her, the potential she's had. Um, the biggest thing, anytime I was on any zoom, I said, why not me? If she can do it, I can do it. She's proof. I can do it. Like her success is proof that there's enough success for me because that's what she's saying. And I'm saying that because the very first, I'm getting goosebumps as I'm sharing this with you because the first few Zooms I was on, that is exactly what I heard. That's exactly what I wrote down. And that's exactly what I manifest into my life. That this year, Eric and I are on track to make more than six figures, like more than that this year from working from home, getting fit in every area of our life and helping people do the exact same thing. Empowerment encouragement, uplifting, supportive people who actually care about each other. Like my success isn't what makes me successful. It's your success that makes me feel successful. And that's what I love. And where do you find that? Everyone's so competitive outside of this, but here we want everyone to be successful. Teresa, can you share a little bit about your success with this? Yes, um, my internet might be spotty, so like flag me if you can't hear me. But um, so I'm Teresa. I live in a super small town in Wisconsin. The average household income here is thirty four thousand, I believe. So husband and wife combined. When I first started coaching, I was a first. I was an assistant to the HR director and chief financial officer at our hospital. Once I had my son and went back to work, I decided to take a job at a bank where I could work partially from home, partially in the office. I didn't like it. It was totally like not my thing. Lots of number crunching and strict deadlines. And with a new baby, it was just like very stressful. And I wasn't getting paid what I thought I was worth, to be honest. And um, so it was just very defeating. And I got pregnant with my, my second child. And I was like, you know what? I'm kind of like dabbling in this whole beach body thing. I'm making close to what I'm making in my paycheck. Um, you know, I think I could potentially earn the same and then if not more, if I did this, you know, more seriously. So I decided I called Trina. Trina is my upline. I called her up one day um, and I said, what do I have to do to make this whole time? Like I'm sick of dropping my kid off at daycare when he doesn't feel well, hoping that they don't call, but feeling bad that my child is my second priority instead of my first. Like this is not the, the life that I envisioned. And um, with every time I had to take him to daycare, not feeling well, he had RSV and it was just a long first year. I, or not first year, he was two at this time. I just felt increasingly more pulled towards this business it was like I was living two different worlds one that was super positive empowering uplifting um, pushing me to grow and then stuck in this job where I had no growth where I you know was stuck working 40 plus hours a week wasn't getting paid well um, and it was just defeating so I decided to go all in and very much like Julianne, um, the income potential is limitless. And I think that's what is so exciting about this business. Her and I talked today and we've definitely had ups and downs and it's not always been easy. And there's coaches who start out really quickly. There's coaches who start out really slow. There is not one way to the top here. So I want you guys to know that too. If you start out slower and you want to dabble in it, I've got diamond coaches on my team that were discount coaches for a year. They decided to work the business and now they are bringing in an awesome supplemental income to their family. So definitely put your blinders on and don't compare yourself to other people's stories, but be inspired by them. Exactly. And so that's where it goes to show this isn't about quitting your job. Like, I don't think that that's what Beachbody's for. We had the option to, and I think that option is so freeing, but like, I just want you guys to know it's plan A for your health, plan A for your fitness, plan A for your mental health, plan B for finances. Like this can seriously change the game for you financially, but not in a way where you have to quit your job. There are a ton of Beachbody coaches 
that are still rocking their other job and then they're rocking beach body. So when we share this, it's not to say, Hey, we think you really need to quit your job. Like you guys, we need teachers out there, please. <laughs> like, like we, we need them. Um, so that's not the point of it. The point is you need to have vision. So what does that look like? And that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. The way to be successful as a coach is to own your own journey, work on yourself, just like Jade, starting 80 day obsession and giving herself that gift to work on herself. Like that is vital. And when we say work on ourselves, like I think coaches get this idea that it has to be a perfect journey. And then when it's not, they're like, I'm not good at this. Use your weaknesses and frustrations and failures as your ammo. Like whatever is a struggle for you, like if your workout was literally like you had to pause it five times, your audience is going to relate to that. If you still body bash, tell that story. But the cool thing now is that you have a solution. Like you're a part of a community that isn't going to allow you to keep feeling that way. And I think that's the solution that you have for people that are watching you. So please don't just share the highlight reel, just share the reel um, of your frustrations, your insecurities. Like, are you a jealous person? I am. I can get really like jealous of other people and I have to gut check myself. And I know how to course correct now because of these four years of growth, but I'm a totally different person as I was four years ago, but I still struggle. And your struggle is your ammo in this business. But in order to get to wherever you want to go, you have to know where you're going. So what does that look like? Your vision. For you, it might be covering the cost of your car payment. For you, it might be covering your mortgage. For you, it might be a guilt-free pedicure. Like you need to know like what are those, what's that elephant on your chest at night? More than likely it's finances. It's not always finances, but most of the coaches that we mentor, it is. Whether it's you are a stay-at-home mom and you just feel guilty about not helping with the household income, right? Or you are a teacher and you don't want to get those other jobs or you don't want, you want to have more wiggle room to go on a vacation and not worry about it, right? Or maybe for me, it's very much of, I really just want to help my family. I would love to help them. Like I would love to help my mom not work two jobs. You guys, my mom still works two jobs. And my vision is so big in this business that I want to retire her. And that's my vision. So a lot of times when you write down your vision, you're like, I don't even know how this is going to happen. <laughs> and you just have to trust that it will, but you have to write it down. It should make you want to cry and leap out of bed. So for Trina, she's our upline. I can't wait for you guys to have the opportunity to listen to her speak. She's just phenomenal. Trina Gray is her name. You'll hear her name a lot more, but she pictured a house by the lake. It took her 10 years. I've been at her house by the lake and it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and it's just serenity. Like she sees the sunrise every single morning and she has just a space of peace. Then I remember she's like, I would love to put a pool in my backyard. And I remember as she was filming the video, her feet were in the pool and she said, this was my vision. She wanted a cottage to spend time with her family. Basically what your vision is, it's whatever the elephant is on your chest and you can remove it to spend more time with the people we love. Isn't that really what it comes down to? You just want to be more present with the people that you love. Would you like to fly to go see someone you love? Like when it, like, this is what I don't like. If someone were to be sick, I have family in the Midwest and the East Coast. If someone from my family were to get sick, could I fly right now, go get a ticket, not even worry to go see them? Yes. Can you answer that? Would that stress you out? Would you make it work? Probably. But this business can seriously be that thing that you're like, I don't have to worry about things like that. Does that make sense? So I just want you to write down your vision. Um, we'll have a call to action on that later, but seriously, like what does your ideal life look like? What, like, what does that look like? Who is in that for me? I seriously picture the biggest dining room table with a home cooked meal with everyone present and not on their phones. And the reason I say that is because I grew up in a broken household. I was home alone most of the time. And I just wish I had two parents sitting at a dinner table and us all discussing our day. Like that's part of my vision. That's not 
money, but it's my vision. And in order to get there, I know what I need to do. So I have a vision like that, if that makes sense. So as you're like pumped up about your vision, you're like, how do I get there? Well, you work on yourself and then you need to start sharing your journey authentically. Don't share beach body. And Teresa is like the best person to follow with this. Like her social media is just freaking gold, man. Like it's just so good. If you go to her like page, mom raising health, so good. Her Instagram page, so good. And she just shares her journey. So this is what's going to happen when you share your journey. You're going to be nervous and you're going to be scared or you're going to have that naysayer. You guys know what I'm talking about? Like someone who makes fun of you or is not nice. So your naysayers in your life, I'm just preparing you. I never want you to be a part of this and think that your situation is unique. It's not. If so, like, if you're nervous, other people have felt nervous. If you get a naysayer, other people have had naysayers. I just don't want you to think that that's like unusual. It might happen. I'm not trying to pump fear in you. In fact, I'm trying to empower you. I'm trying to prepare you. I'm trying to teach you. And I've got your back. I've got your back. So the naysayers in our life are the people who love us, but they're like so fearful of you failing. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's probably like your mom where I was like, okay, I'm like moving to California. And my, uh, it's recorded. My uncle was like, no, I don't think you should do that. It's really expensive. I wouldn't move there. Like naysayer. He loves me, but he doesn't want me to move there because out of his own fear, his own fear. He's projecting his own fear upon me. Um, my good friend, Sarah, her mom says, Sarah, you shouldn't do those workouts because you can get hurt. So you should work out on a treadmill. Naysayer loves her, but doesn't want her to get hurt. So she's projecting her fear onto Sarah. Do you guys have naysayers in your life? It's probably a good friend. It could be a spouse. Honestly, it could be, it's more than likely a family member. Those are the people who you're like, oh, you're not doing that, are you? Because maybe they failed as a coach and you can only fail. You only guarantee that by quitting. So maybe they're using their experience to pump their insecurity into you. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah, you guys are like, yeah, I got it. Like it's this person, this person, this person, right? Totally. You're going to have naysayers. And the thing is, you have to remember the naysayers love me. They love me. They love me. They love me. And they don't want me to fail, but they love me. Right. And you just have to have that perspective of like, I love you too, but I can't listen to you because this matters way too much to me. My vision's too big. You with me, you're going to have naysayers. They're going to pump. They're going to try. Then you're going to have haters. These people are great. Like these are the people that like legitimately are jerks and they hate them their own selves. So naysayers, they love you. Haters, they don't. They don't love you. Like they literally love being negative and they love ruining people's days. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Like those people, why on earth would you let that person determine what you could be in this business? Seriously. Like you're going to have a hater who's like, beach body sucks. Be like, sweet. You're 40 pounds overweight. I'm not listening to you. Right. Or like beach body doesn't work okay, like you're living paycheck to che paycheck and you're broke. Like you have to put that perspective on, okay? So when you have a hater, they're really, really insecure. But I just want to prep you and help you understand that this is a possibility of you posting on social media. But are you guys kind of like, oh my gosh, why am I scared to post on social media? Like naysayers love me, but not listening to them. Haters, like I'm so sad how they feel about themselves. I'm so sad about how they feel for themselves, right? You just delete their comments. Don't even buy into it if that happens. If that happens. For me, it was comments to my face. Um, of It was people that I knew from college legitimately mocking me and making fun of me. I wouldn't play into it. But in my heart, I was like, I know this is going to be something. Like, it makes me feel a certain way. This community is really amazing. And for some reason, I just kept, like, saying that every time they would make fun of me. And then now I'm like here and then now I'm like, they're still there. Like not there. Or, I'm not talking about jobs. I'm talking about like mindset. Does that make sense? Where like, I'm like, oh, so glad I didn't listen to you. And then thirdly, there's going to be your own self-doubt, your own limiting beliefs. My two limiting beliefs in life, money's hard to come by. That's my limiting belief. This business has taught me that that's not true, but it still pops up. I worry a lot about money. Um, and another limiting belief I have in life is, um, I'm, I'm not where I want to be when I want to be there. 
and that's frustrating. Like you guys, it's really, I remember being on these calls and being like, I just want to be there. Like, I just want to be making this much. I just want to be doing that. I want to like skip these steps and be there. I want to lose 30 pounds and be there, right? You guys can't cut corners because this process is going to make you. This process is going to change your entire life and it's going to be awesome. Teresa, do you want to comment on anything on the naysayers, haters, self-doubt, limiting beliefs, anything that you would want to share with that? Yeah, it's definitely good. I mean, you probably think, why is she saying all this on a new coach call? But the thing is like, just be prepared for it because when it happens, you'll be like, oh, this is what she was talking about instead of being like, oh my gosh, I want to quit and cry because I don't want people to judge me. That's how I was. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, this one guy would like screenshot my pictures, send them to my sister and say like negative things about me. And of course, my sister would show me and I was like, what? So I just blocked him, like good family friend blocked and like I just don't need that and it doesn't align with where I want to go and you just have to think that like if you wouldn't want their life and you know you don't really talk to them on the daily and they're judging you you just have to accept that they're doing it for a reason some they're not happy in some way shape or form in their life and it's easier for people to reflect that on other people and it just says a lot about them so being confident, like you decided to be coach for a reason because you loved the challenge groups or you loved, you know, the person you were following on social media. Um, and you want this positive outlet in your life and you should be loud and proud about that because we change more lives than any other profession that I honestly know. Um, we've got a lot of medical professionals on our team and I think, um, Jen, she's on the call tonight with her new coach, but she just had like three people hug her at work last week or two weeks ago and one of them was crying and she's like, just your posts alone have completely changed my life. I've gotten up, I've gotten up in the morning and worked out. I've lost X amount of pounds. Um, and she's in the medical field and she's like, it feels so good to be on the other end of preventative care, you know, and helping people. And it's just crazy the impact we have through social media and through posting. So don't be afraid to post because that's the impact that you have. It might not be people who like or comment, but they definitely see and they definitely watch. So it's powerful. That's so true. I was talking to someone today about a challenge group and she's a teacher. And literally you guys, this is all I said. I said, how's your sleep? <laughs> That's the only question I asked her at first. And she's like, I get up in the middle of the night. I was like, I used to get up two to three times in the middle of the night as a teacher. Then I learned how to take care of myself and I would sleep like a freaking awesome rock star and wake up that next day rejuvenated as a teacher. Like I just knew like she was struggling with sleep because that's, that's what I did. So to know that I have this solution for her that she won't feel so exhausted so she won't burn out as a teacher. Like that made me so excited to help her. Definitely. So again, we're not like trying to be like, ah, I just want you guys to know like when you stand for something that matters to you, it's interesting the light it brings in your life. And you have to understand that you're going to go on this journey of growth and not everyone's going to be growing with you. And I just don't want you to ever stop because of other people's either tiny minds or insecurities or own fears. So it's really important to start establishing, like, I totally get that that's how you feel, but just because you feel that way, doesn't mean that I have to listen to what you say, if that makes sense. And I just want you to understand that like we're a community. So when that stuff happens or if it happens, um, you're not alone. And I think that's just what I want to normalize is that when you stand for something, not everyone's going to agree with it, but you'll find that it's worth standing for in the end. It's really cool. So as you're, you're thinking and knowing about this potential, which I hope excites you because I just needed to hear why not me, why not me, why not me? And I just would repeat it over and over. I have that vision. And then you know what? I might have these obstacles in my way. I might be my own obstacle with my limiting beliefs, but I'm, I'm willing to fight through it. And how I would do that is connecting on these calls, is connecting with the team, connecting to this mission. And then how do you get to where you want to go now? And that's sharing your story and that's sharing your vulnerable story. So not necessarily like here's all my dirty laundry and airing it out, but really thinking about, I was just talking to Teresa about this. Um, how many times, if you guys were to take a selfie, you take 10 and you pick one. 
And then after you pick the one that you like, you delete all the rest. Have you guys done that before? You're more than likely deleting the rest because you didn't like the way that you looked. It's weird. Like we do this like weird thing when we do that. I really encourage you to share the hard, like share the not so glamorous, to share the, the picture that literally makes you cringe a little bit and share that and always ask yourself why. Why am I upset that when I look at my legs, I see cellulite? Like, why am I upset when I see a picture of my own self? And then when you can share that with vulnerability to people, they're going to be like, I feel that way too. And then you get to be like, this community I'm surrounding myself with is teaching me self-love. Like, that's what I'm so excited about for you guys. Is like, this journey is so incredible because it transforms the way you think about yourself. So as you share your journey, don't share beach body. Share your journey, the struggles, the ups, the downs, the victories, the small wins, like share what fills your cup, why you're excited. After this call, which we need to get off like really soon because I want to stick to my word, um, is, is share why you're excited about this. I think a lot of coaches think that they have to have a certain amount in their bank account in order to be a successful coach, or they have to be a certain place to be successful. I have to tell you, I owned being successful day one. I owned it. I was like, I love this. Like this is, I, it was like, no one needs to see my paycheck because I acted like it was a million dollars and not because I was trying to be fake, but because I felt like I won the lottery, but better because I earned it. Like, I just, I swear to you, like just own right now. Don't think, well, once I'm done with my program, I'll be a successful coach. Or if I start making a hundred dollars a week, I'll be successful. You're only as successful as you choose to be right in this moment right now. So if you could just stick on for five more minutes, I promise I'll like, we'll get off. I just, I, I want to stick to that. Um, so when you make these posts, what do you do? Because I want your number one goal to be this. I want you to help at least one person this month. I want you to help one person with a challenge pack and a challenge pack is the beach, what probably what you got which is the Beachbody On Demand and Shakeology. And the reason I want you to help at least one person is because one, that feeling of helping someone is seriously unlike anything else. It is awesome knowing that this gift doesn't just stay with you, but that you can give it to someone else. I still feel that way every single time someone gets a challenge pack from me. Like it like makes, cause this has changed my life so much. I want you to help one person and I want you to have this goal of going emerald. So if you were to write that down, emeralds, and I'm going to help at least one person. And how you're going to do that is you are going to share your journey authentically, vulnerable, right? Anytime someone likes or comments on your post, you need to be like, Carrie, thank you so much for showing me so much love on my fitness post. I appreciate the support. It gives me the confidence to keep going. You need to do this with me. Or you could be like, I don't know if you saw, but I have this group coming up. Like you just need to bite the bullet and be like, you need to do this with me, right? It's, it's not pushy when they've reached out already and have liked or commented on a post. Does that make sense? They might say no, or they'll be like, yeah, give me more information. And then you're like, crap, what do I say? Your coach is going to help you. Okay. Like Carrie, if you were to do that and then you're like, now what? Just like, like Julian, what do I say back? I'll help you. I'll work. I'll work my way through helping you. Our next call, I'm going to, and Teresa and I are going to walk you guys through this invite process, but I just want you for this week, I want you to be sharing your authentic story and I want you to get used to reaching out to people. It can be scary because you might be afraid of rejection and you might be scared because you don't know what to say, right? Don't overthink it. When you can genuinely reach out to someone and be like, hey, thank you, and you should seriously do this with me, you're speaking because at, you're just doing it. Does that make sense? Like you're going to do it regardless if they join you or not. So next week, I'm going to post about it. Don't worry. We are going to talk about Success Club and we're going to talk about Emerald. But for now, can you guys just promise me that you're just going to own your own truth by working on yourself? Yes? You're going to work on yourself, right? Self-care, working out, drinking your shake, right? And then choosing to share your story. Are you guys with me? 
And maybe some of you are already at that step and you're like, man, Jillian, I need to just reach out and do five, four, three, two, one, and just do it. Um, I will help you. Teresa will help you. We will give you the tools to know what to say when they're like, ah, I'm ready. And you're like, I have no idea. Look at that, Jade, because you're freaking rock. Cause you're like, I'm successful now. I'm awesome now. Like you guys just like own it. Be like, I'm so excited. By the way, Jade told me no and like didn't do this for like three years. And I'm like, you've been on my dream team list forever. It's so exciting. Um, anyway, you see people will ignore you or not join you or say no. And you just have to trust that they'll come. They will. You just can't quit. Um, this opportunity is seriously for all of us. And Teresa and I want to help you but you have to be willing to listen to what we say, okay? But you will not want to do the hard things if you don't know why you're doing it. That vision is key because you'll, you'll be like, no, I'm not, I'm too scared to post on social media. That's too scary. Not when your vision is so big. You'll be like, you know what, Julian? I'm scared, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, you're just gonna do it and you're gonna trust us and we want you to not be salesy. You guys know what I'm talking about when you see on social media where literally like maybe you've gotten the message with like a link and you're literally like, oh, don't be like that. <laughs> don't be salesy. Don't be beach body. Just be you. Like be your own magazine. When you're looking at your social media, you're sharing a genuine story of you walking the walk and you're not being salesy. So everything you don't like on social media, don't just don't do that. If that makes sense. Okay. I'm going to hit end.